Welcome to the world of procedural generation. Today, we are going to take a deep dive into another important noise algorithm, so value noise. This algorithm was first introduced by Ken Perlin, the same person who created Perlin noise actually, and it's a powerful tool for creating realistic and natural looking patterns. Value noise is a type of noise that, similarly to pearly noise, generates random but natural looking patterns. However, it works differently from pearly noise and it creates patterns that are more similar to the natural world, such as terrains and landscapes. The algorithm is based on the concept of interpolation and it uses a mathematical function to generate noise value at each point in a multi-dimensional space. The value noise function can be applied in any number of dimensions, but it's commonly used in 2D and 3D spaces. In 2D space, the function generates a continuous noise pattern that can be used to create a variety of textures such as clouds, marble or even wood grain. In 3D space, the function can be used to generate realistic terrain, cave systems, and even volumetric clouds. The value noise function is based on the idea of generating random values at a set of discrete points, also known as control points, and then interpolating the values between them to create a smooth, continuous pattern. The interpolation function can be linear, cosine or any other mathematical function that can be used to smoothly transition between values. The most commonly used interpolation function for value noise is the cosine interpolation, which we will not use in our code, but we will actually see. This function creates a smooth transition between the control points and it's particularly useful for creating natural looking patterns. The cosine interpolation function is defined as the product of the cosine of the interpolation parameter multiplied by the difference between the two control points. It gives a smooth curve which is more similar to natural patterns. But we can use other interpolation functions like linear, which we will see, or cubic interpolation, which we will also see, that can give different results. It's also important to note that value noise can be easily adjusted to change the frequency and the amplitude of the noise, which allows you to control the level of detail and the scale of the generated patterns. Higher frequencies lead to more detailed patterns, while lower frequency lead to more smooth patterns. Additionally, the amplitude can be adjusted to charge the range of the generated values, which allows you to control the contrast of the generated patterns. Also, value noise can be easily tiled, which means that you can repeat the same noise pattern seamlessly across a large area. This is useful for generating large terrains or other types of large-scale procedural content. We will not use the amplitude for this type of noise. Actually, we will see what amplitude is in the Perlin noise video. Also, we will introduce some more parameters. In my implementation, we have a configuration class that simply sets all the required parameters. And after that, we can simply generate the texture with a function that looks like the random noise function described in the previous video. We first have a frequency that tells us at which frequency we should sample our word coordinates in order to use them as control points. Higher values mean further away control points, which simply means that we are zooming out our texture in contrast with smaller values, which mean zooming in the texture. Then we have a dimension pattern that specifies the dimension of the coordinates that we want to sample. To be precise, if we have a unidimensional noise, we will consider only one dimension coordinates. The same applies to B-dimensional noise, which considers 2D coordinates, and so on and so forth. 
Finally, we have a bunch of parameters that are used in order to set up our hash list, which describes how many shapes of gray we will consider for the interpolation process. We may also want to shuffle the list with this simple function in order to randomize the noise pattern. Otherwise, we would end up with a non-noise texture. The noise generation function may seem tricky at a first sight, but it's fairly simple to understand. First, we want to multiply the point coordinate by our frequency. We then get the control point's correct coordinate, which I improperly named X shade, and finally, we get the relative position of the point that we are analyzing with respect to our control point. We simply mask the control point value with a bitwise operation that we can easily visualize like this, in case some of you are not familiar with bitwise operations. It's just a quicker way to compute the module of our coordinates with respect to our hash list. This operation leads us to get the hash value, or in other words, the grayscale value of our first control point. And finally, we get the shade of the next control point, because we know that a point is always contained between two control points in the grid. And we get his grayscale shade. We do all of these for each single coordinate. After all of this, we interpolate with a linear interpolator function of the parameter that we previously calculated, which defines the relative distance of our sample point from our first control point. As you may notice, the value is smoothed by a smoothing function in order to improve the quality of the noise. This might seem tricky to understand, but it's just a way to smooth the value of interpolation in order to get a more spatially coherent noise value. And here we go, with a final result. We can enjoy a value noise texture that can be used for all of your personal projects. In conclusion, value noise is a powerful and versatile algorithm that can be used to generate realistic and natural looking patterns. It's particularly useful for creating terrain and landscapes, but it can be applied to a wide variety of other applications as well. Understanding the mathematical concepts behind value noise, such as interpolation, frequency and amplitude, which we will see in the next video, will allow you to fine-tune the algorithm to your specific needs and create your own variations and use cases for it. Additionally, the ability to tie the noise pattern allows for even more flexibility and control in your procedural generation. With value noise, the possibilities are endless. And the more you understand and experiment with it, the more you'll be able to take advantage of its capabilities. So, thanks for watching and happy coding! Oh, and don't forget to check out my other videos about this series. And remember that the best way to master value noise is by experimenting with it and by creating your own projects. Good luck and have fun! Cheers!